So context, also what I would call living in the now. Um, you always have to be living in the now, right here, right now, whenever you're making trades. So what I have here is there are no set parameters in trading. In other words, just because X happens doesn't mean that you do this or this. Sometimes whenever X happens, you may go short. Sometimes whenever X happens, you may go long. It just depends on the current situation right now and what's happening within the context. Uh, while any methodology is based on the idea that certain patterns repeat, the overall context of the action must always come into play. What is the most likely scenario based on what you are seeing right now? Um, and then I, I have what here, <clears throat> what I've labeled as four types of action. Now these labors are for illustrative purposes. There's obviously no way to reduce and label every type of price action that may occur, but you will generally see some variation of the following descriptions. All right, so uh, type number one would be what I call game on. Um, everybody's itching to play, traders are firing, taking shots, attempting to defend positions, and attempting to create momentum. They're sitting tight when they're on the right side and puking out when they're on the wrong side. There's a steady flow of volume. Uh, we see this around news, release, news releases as well as pressure points such as breakouts or defensive plays around highs, lows, steps in the profile, or a price that seems to be holding strong. So just for example, um, let's say it's 8.20 in the morning. It's not. You can see it's 11.50 a.m. here, but this will you know, make my point. Uh, it's 8.20 a.m. News release comes out at 8.30 a.m. When that news release comes out, there's going to be volume all you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm going to show examples of this as this video progresses. Everybody's in the game. Everybody's ready to go. That's when you want to be playing. Whenever you know levels, someone's trying to defend a level uh, or they're trying to run a level. And you want to try to make the right call, of course, in that scenario. But at least you know there's going to be action. So there's a reason for you to risk your money because you're going to get paid if you're right. So the, the re possible reward justifies the risk. So now your, your type 2 action is what I would call slow but methodical. Traders who swing large size are trying to position themselves for a move, but doing so in a very slow and methodical way. This action can look like it offers no opportunity, but in fact can yield very good trades if you have the patience to sit and wait. We usually see this later in the morning or afternoon after the initial reactions to news have settled. So again, the slow but methodical type action may happen actually around this time right here. It could, you know, maybe 10, 30, 11, 11, 30 a.m. or <clears throat> maybe even going into the noon hour. What you might have is a situation where it appears like not much is happening, but there is a little bit of movement back and forth. The market may be ranging, uh, like for example here on this day we see it was ranging pretty heavy between two half and three half four. But there was some back and forth movement. There was some size being traded. You can even see it here. The market had pulled off of, of five. Syrian was trading down a bit on fairly decent size. And so even though it's back and forth and in the range, there's still some, some volume moving around. And there may be a play to be had there. And so your job is to kind of identify, is to try to identify, A, w does this have potential for movement? B, if you think it does have potential, then what's the best entry price? Where would you be looking to go? Um, and then C, of course, you have to manage the trade properly, meaning you already know that if you get into a trade in a slow but methodical type area, you're probably going to have to wait it out for a little while. It's not going to be like right after an unemployment report where you can hit it and instantly the market you know, may jump 566 six, uh, in your favor or may instantly be against you and you got to blow out. <clears throat> the slow but methodical phase requires you to sit through usually some back and forth uh, action and you have to allow yourself a, a, a small stop loss. I mean you, you're not going to make a trade usually in, a, in this type of action where you're going to scratch the trade. You're going to have to step up, make the call, and then uh, establish where you think you would definitely be wrong and then sit in your trade and just ride it out. Uh, the third type would be what I call the suck you in or trap you type action. So this is the action that makes you think something's going to happen when, in reality, <clears throat> the odds are that nothing at all is going to happen and you will either sit in a trade for an hour without the market moving 
or get hooked on the wrong side and blow out of the exact turning point, which brings it back to your price. And I'm sure you know you've all been there. I've been there many times. Most of the major players, as well as short-term scalpers, have already made their moves. And the only people currently trading are large institutions who have to monitor the markets all day and short-term traders who are down money and hoping to get their money back, right? You see this often in the afternoon. It might be 1, 1 1.30, 2 p.m., 2.30 p.m., whatever. And the market's going back and forth. And and you're just sitting there and you're you're trying to, to spot a move. But there's really nothing to be had. But yet it's moving just enough that you think, ah, it might go. It might crack this level. Even though in the back of your mind you're pretty sure it, there's really no reason for it to crack this level. And so the whole idea is large players can maneuver in those areas very, very well because the risk is highly limited. They know pretty much where the outside of the ranges are going to be during those time frames. So larger players can make some moves and then they can even make it look like a level is going to break and it gets through by one tick and then comes right back into the range. You know, and so you try to go for the breakout play, you get sucked in, it rallies three, four ticks against you, you can't stand it, you blow out for a four tick loss, and that's the exact price where it stops, turns around and comes back to the breaking point level. So you obviously want to try to avoid that type of action. And then the last type of action would be what I call game over. Uh, which is a total flat line, no action, no trade is better than a 50-50 shot, as opposed to some trades are much better than a 50-50 shot if you're if you position yourself in the right, the right price at the right time uh, when the market's moving. So this is normally what you will see around holidays, rollover periods, and days when everyone everyone is awaiting a major release such as unemployment, FOMC, etc. Uh, it also happens at some point every day when winners leave, losers throw up their hands and leave, and large institutions have nothing to do. So you may be sitting there, and the market's in a two-tick range, and there's nothing to be had. And you can't even scalp a tick. Like, you know, It's not even to the situation where you can buy two halves, sell three, sell three, buy two halves. It just does not move. There's nothing to be done. Um, the instant it goes up a tick and you try to go with it, it's going to come back down a tick and then probably two and then you're going to blow out for a two tick loss and then it's going to come back. It's one of those situations where nothing's going on and you really have to identify that quickly and just stop even thinking about trading and turning off your computer uh, and call it a day at that point, win or lose. And of course all of this is based around the very simple idea of who's going to hit the next price. So you have to have that in the back of your mind at all times. If you buy or sell two halves or tens or eighteens, whatever the case may be, who's going to hit the next price? If you buy two halves, who has to buy threes? If you sell two halves, who has to sell twos? You know, what's going on? Um, what's the context? What's the overall action of the day telling you right now? And that's how you can make a, a better, educated, informed decision and uh, make your <clears throat> excuse me your percentage of winners higher, percentage of losers lower, hopefully, uh, and just make better trades all the way around.